Hey everyone, this is Dawn. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you an updated video on how to make refillable notepad covers. Okay, so this is an example and all of the supplies that I'll be using today are currently available on both Amazon and also uh, papers and shimmer trim are available through close to my heart. Okay. And I'll make a list with links in the description below. So the papers I'll be using are from the Gnomes for Winter collection, but you can use whatever pattern papers you like. Just make sure they're a, a nice heavyweight pattern paper. And then I'm using Sapphire cardstock from close to my heart. And the paper pad, uh, this is, it's just from Amazon or you can get it at any office supply store. Make sure it's a five by eight. Okay, so I'm going to show you all the supplies that you'll need to make this project. The first thing is some chipboard. This is cut down to eight and a half by five and a half. And the brand I like is Graphics, and this is the medium weight chipboard. You can get it in 12 by 12 or eight by 11. Okay, so you need two pieces at five and a half by eight and a half. Next, you'll need some book binding tape. I found this on Amazon. It's from Gaffer Power and it comes in several colors. This is the white and it's two inches wide and it comes in a great big roll and you can make a whole bunch of notepads with this. Next is the wide tip uh, Zig glue. This is the two-way glue uh, from EK Success. You'll need a good bone folder and I recommend a real bone folder and not a plastic one. Some washi tape and this is I believe it's half an inch and you'll need some shimmer trim and this is from close to my heart comes in a bunch of different colors this one is silver and then you'll need some grow grain ribbon you can use this is I think it's a uh, half an inch no quarter inch but you can go up to a half an inch and then a pen this is from Pentel it's the RSVP brand and you're able to open it up from the base. Then you'll also need some metal book corners and I get these, you can get them in silver, gold or bronze and I'll put a link in the description below. They're from Amazon. A hammer and some uh, glue dots. And then also um, off camera, I've got here it is. I've got some score tape. This is a quarter inch. Um, you can use an eighth of an inch, but I think a quarter of an inch works best. Okay. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to start by cutting down all of my papers. All right. So one of the hardest parts about doing this project is just deciding what papers you want to use. So you need to figure out what you want your cover to look like and then what you want the inside and what you want the pocket to be made out, made out of. Um, so I'm going to start with this snow paper and I'll go ahead and cut off the zip strip. And then you'll need two pieces cut at six by 10. So when you're looking at your papers, decide uh, what you want to be your front cover and what you want to be your back cover. If there's a direction, uh, be mindful of that so that you uh, make sure that everything's right side up when you're finished. Um, I just chose a non-directional pattern uh, to make things easier. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut two inches off. Hang on to that piece. You'll need some of it later and then just cut it in half. Okay, so that's going to be my front cover and then also keep in mind that the edge um, where it's bound some of the pattern is going to be covered with the book binding tape so if you want something a critical area of your pattern to show make sure that you uh, place your uh, paper in correctly and you cut it the way you want it to be okay so now i'm cutting the inside of the cover and trimming off that zip strip. I'm going to be generous with my cuts. I can trim them down later. Um, there's an area where it's uh, not exact as far as 
the dimensions and you won't know till you kind of have things partially assembled. So I'm cutting this piece at approximately eight and a half by 11 and three quarters, but I'm being a little bit generous. So it's a smidge larger than that. And then you'll see later on, I'll trim it down. So let's go ahead and move on. The next piece, I'm gonna bring in cardstock and you'll need a piece cut at four by eight. And this piece won't be seen, but I like to use something that coordinates. A little peak of it is seen, so. Um, then you're gonna cut a piece at five by five. Now this is going to be your pocket inside, so you could use pattern paper. For this particular one, I decided to just use sapphire. So I'm cutting it five by five, and then I'm laying it down in my trimmer, corner to corner, and I'm gonna cut again so that I have a triangle, okay? So that's gonna be my pocket. And then I need two more pieces of sapphire cut at one by four. So we'll put that in and need two of, two of those cut, one inch by four inch. Then I'm going to bring my score tool in and I'm putting it back in my trimmer so that the, uh, the um, I think it's, I don't know what it's called, the area where the blade falls, um, it's in between. So I've got a half an inch on either side and then I'm just using it to make a score line right in the center at the half inch mark. And it's, it's good to go. You'll, you'll see what this does later on. Okay. I'm just making a score line. And then the last piece, I'm going to bring in that other uh, leftover piece from the, the cover cuts that was two inches that we cut off. Looking for it. <laughs> and then I'm going to put it back in my trimmer and cut it at five inches. So I'm making sure it's two inches and then I'll cut five inches. Okay, so now we have all of our cut pieces and we're ready to start working on the cover, okay? All right, so you choose which pattern paper, uh, which piece you want to be your cover and which you want to be the back. And the left side of this butts up against the edge of the left side of your cover, okay? So I just like to lay it down right next to it. And then you just put all kinds of glue from this uh, Zig glue pen all over that piece of chipboard. If you tap it, you'll get uh, more. Make sure you butt that edge right up against the edge of your pattern paper. Okay, and then you can flip it over and this is where your bone folder comes in. Just smooth everything out. Make sure you don't have any bubbles or wrinkles and it's nice and smooth and you get a, a nice bond with that paper. Now the technique we're doing is called mitering the corners. All right, so you just fold that corner right up against the edge of the chipboard and then kind of press down with your bone folder right down into those edges and add some glue and glue it down. So I'm going to leave all of this in the video so that we can do both the cover, the front cover and the back cover. And you'll get the hang of it by watching and add some glue to the other corner. And then you take the whole cover and roll it towards you. Okay, so you're going to get some memory with that paper. You don't want to fold. If you fold, the paper could crack. Um, it might fold incorrectly. You want it to roll. So you have a nice curve around that uh, front cover edge. All right, so just roll it towards you and then add some glue and glue it down and then roll it and then add some glue and glue it down. So you have a nice edge around 
the sides of that cover. Okay, roll it towards you and then add some glue. Okay. All right, front cover is all done. Now we'll work on the back cover and just be mindful of uh, how you want it to lay. And this time I'm checking, sometimes I triple check to make sure this time the edge is gonna go right up to the right edge. So I'm laying it down and then I'll cover this piece of chipboard with glue, be generous. You wanna get a nice bond. And then butt that edge right up to the edge of the cardstock. Okay, and then flip it over. And I'm checking to make sure I like the way it looks. I can't tell you how many of these I've made and uh, with a directional pattern and found out that it was upside down once I got it assembled. So I'm super careful with uh, deciding what patterns and how they lay before I start gluing. Okay, I'm gonna miter the corners again and add some glue and glue those down. And then roll the whole edge towards you and then add some glue. Can use your bone folder to help you out. Make sure it's nice and smoothed out. And then roll the edge. I get a little impatient waiting for the glue to dry, so make sure it's all set up there. Smooth down. And then roll the edge and glue that one down. So now you've got your front and back cover complete. Okay. Checking to make sure I like the way it looks. All right, next step, I'm gonna add the book binding tape, okay? So I use roughly about 12 inches and the width of it is about two inches. So I'm just gonna chop off a piece, and then I like to use the measurements on my verse mat. So if you just lay it down with the sticky side up, and I've got it between the five and the seven marks on my verse mat, and this is a one and done. So you wanna place it so that each of your covers are even with each other, and then there's a gap of between a half an inch and three quarters of an inch in the middle of exposed sticky tape and then you place it down and then fold up the top and the bottom okay so this is why your centerpiece is gonna vary as far as the measurements go because it really depends on where you land those pieces and how big the gap is okay so I checked to make sure that they were lined up against each other and you can make adjustments by using shimmer trim and I'll show you how in just a sec. I'm cutting off two pieces. They're roughly 12 inches each. And when you place your shimmer trim down, if you got your book binding tape on crooked, you can fix things by putting your shimmer trim and uh, covering it over the edge of the book binding tape and making your shimmer trim straight. And then you can also make it so that the edges of the book binding tape line up correctly and evenly with each other by placing the shimmer trim in a certain position so that it's even. Okay, the shimmer trim is self-adhesive, so I pulled off that backing and I'm placing it so that the edge of the shimmer trim matches up once you close the book. And we'll get that stuck down. Okay, so now everything looks nice and even. So you can, if you make any, there really aren't any mistakes, but if you feel like you got something on crooked or not evenly, and uh, you can fix it by using your shimmer trim, okay? So now we're gonna make these loops. 
for the pen. And it's also, um, once you get everything assembled, um, the book binding tape, it's kind of, it's tight and your whole cover will out alligator a bit and won't close evenly. Um, and so using these pen loops, it um, helps it to relax. And after like a night um, sitting on your desk, it'll stretch and then the book will close and it won't alligator anymore. Um, but then you also have a nice place to put your pen. Okay, so I've cut off about four inches and I'm using glue dots. And this is pretty much the fussiest part of the whole project is uh, adding these loops, but I've got two in between. So I have it looped over my pen and then I'm going to attach it to the cover with glue dots. And you wanna make sure that they're loose enough so that you can slide the pen in and out, but not uh, too tight, too loose or too tight. It's kind of a happy medium. And so if you fuss with it um, and get it where you want it, it eventually, and once you make a few of these covers, you'll kind of have, you'll kind of have the feel for how tight you need to make the loops. So when you add that back cover loop, make sure that you don't put them so that they're on top of each other. Um, you want them stacked vertically. Okay, so you don't want them right on top. You want to have one loop on top of the other so you can slide them, the pen like that. Okay. All right, so that's good to go. I've checked it, make sure it's not too tight, too loose. And now we can start uh, adding our inside. Okay, so this is where I'm remeasuring and I'm just laying it down and seeing. Um, I've got a little bit too much, so I'm just kind of trimming it eighth of an inch, just taking a smidge. It's better to have a little too much and then have to trim it down than not have enough. But you want it to go right up to those edges. Okay, so I'm taking off another eighth of an inch and it was a little bit too tall. Another eighth of an inch, I think we've got it. Okay, you want it to go right to those edges. Okay, I think that's good to go. Now we're gonna use our Zig two-way glue and just put a whole bunch of it on the inside and then put some extra right up to the edges of your pattern paper. Okay, this glue dries really fast and usually doesn't wrinkle or bubble, especially when you smooth it out with your bone folder, so be generous. Okay, I kind of place my inside paper down and then I press in the center there where the exposed book binding tape is. And then I start smoothing everything down. Okay, you have to remember there's some ribbon under there. The edges of uh, the paper have to meet exactly with the corners there. And then you're smoothing over the book binding tape and shimmer trim and everything. So just smooth it all out. And while you're smoothing it, it's drying. Okay. Next up, we're going to work with this five by eight notepad. So I'm going to make it pretty. We don't like that label on there. So I'm going to add this pattern paper also with the zig glue. And this is the piece that is two inches by five inches. And just going to add it right to the top there and be mindful where you place it so that you're not covering up where the, um, um, what is it called? Where you, you uh, pull the paper off and the perforation. <laughs> Don't cover that portion up with this uh, fancy piece of pattern paper. Otherwise you'll have trouble tearing your paper off your pad. <laughs> okay, so then I, I rolled it again and glued it to the back. Now we're going to create a sleeve to uh, put our uh, pad of paper on that will uh, enable it to be removable from your cover. So you take the four by eight and put it in nice and snug up to the top and then just roll those pieces towards the back. And then you're gonna add the score tape. I like to use a ton of it, okay? So this is the permanent portion of your refillable notepad. So I like to use three pieces. 
and make sure it's only on the cardstock. Okay, so your pad of paper is gonna lay like that and you're creating a sleeve. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, protective coating from the score tape. And then again, this is a one and done. So make sure when you place it down that it's straight, okay? So you've got even amount on the top bottom and then a little on the, the side there. Just place the whole thing down and then slide your pad of paper out and then uh, take your bone folder and make sure that it bonds nice and evenly with the inside cover. And that's your sleeve. And so when you run out of paper, you can put a new paper pad in there. Okay, now we're gonna create our pocket for the left side of the cover, all right? So I like to put a piece of washi tape on the edge so that it doesn't get all crunched up when you start using that pocket. You don't just want it to be pretty, you wanna be able to use it, right? So I like to take a piece of washi tape and just cover that edge and it strengthens it and keeps it from getting all messed up when you start using that pocket. Okay, so I've just rolled the washi over the edge there. And then these are those two pieces that are one inch by four inch that you scored. I'm gonna go ahead and fold them. And I'm using them to kind of lift the pocket away from the cover. Um, a long time ago when I first started making these, I adhered the pocket directly to the cover and you could never get into the pocket. So I figured out that if you lift it just a little bit, it makes it a whole lot easier to get things in and out of the pocket. So that's what these little two pieces are that are folded. So I'm creating a lift. So I'm gonna attach them to the back side of the pocket. One on either side. And then I'm gonna add some more score tape from edge to edge. So this piece of score tape is going to attach the pocket to the cover. Okay, so I'm going right from that corner there all the way over. Okay. So you remove the, the protective coating. And then you're ready to adhere the whole pocket to the inside cover. So make sure you go all the way down to that corner and press it down really well and make sure it adheres nicely. Okay. All right, now you're ready to add your metal corners. All right, so I'm gonna pull four of these silver ones out and you just pop them on the corner, make sure it's over everything and then just hammer it down. You want that metal to bend and flatten on the inside cover so that that corner doesn't pop off. You can also add a couple drops of glue if you want to. Um, if you don't hammer it down hard enough, these corners can pop off. So you don't want that to happen. So make sure you get it on top of all the papers, nice and snug, and then just hammer it and make sure it, the metal bends and flattens out and it's on there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and slide that pad of paper in and that's our cover. Then it's alligatoring. So we're gonna do something about that, but first I want to make this pen pretty. Okay, so I'm taking some more patterned paper and I'm just gonna cut a bit of it and then I'm gonna roll it. You're gonna create a tube out of that pattern paper. Then you open your pen up and you slide that tube in. And then you can slide the pen back in and then close it up there. And then you have a pretty pen, okay? And then you can slide it in loops and it will keep it closed. And like I said, that book binding tape will loosen up a bit. Usually it takes like a night sitting on your desk and then it won't alligator anymore. And you're good to go. And there's your notepad. 
So I will make a list of all of these supplies. Like I said, all, all of them except for the pattern papers and shimmer trim are from Amazon. And you can get the pattern papers and shimmer trim from my uh, website at, at Close to My Heart. And I will make a list with links of all of the supplies so you can make this project too. Once you do one, you're, you'll be addicted and you want to make a whole bunch of them. It's lots of fun. They make great gifts. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And then you'll be able to find all of my videos. And thanks for watching.